Hey third grade, this is your math video for lesson 711. So today we are going to be looking at fractions and number stories. So we've looked at them as fraction circles, fraction strips, fractions on a number line. So now we're looking at how to solve number stories that involve fractions. To get our brains warmed up, um, all you're going to need for this lesson is your whiteboard or a piece of paper. We are not working in our workbooks. Um, so some mental math, we are going to look at um, using the benchmark one half. So we're going to say if a fraction is greater than or less than the benchmark one half. Okay. So let's look here. Um, you don't have to do this on the whiteboard. You can just think it in your head. So if I have zero halves and one half, um, is zero halves greater than or less than one half? We would say it is less than. So zero halves is less than one half. What about two halves and one half? Is two halves greater than or less than one half? We would say two halves is greater than one half. What about the next one, friends? Three fourths and one half. Is three fourths greater or less than one half? It is greater than one half. What would half be if we're talking about fourths? It would be two-fourths, because two is half of four. All right, what about two-sixths and one-half? Is two-sixths greater or less than one-half? It is less than one-half. What about one-fourth? One-fourth would be less than one-half. And five-sixths, that would be greater than one-half. Fourth-sixths. Three sixths is half. For fourths, we said two fourths is half. And then we have one half. So, just again, a quick mental math. So, you're thinking about those benchmarks like zero, one half, and one to help you compare fractions. So, the next few problems we are going to do on our whiteboards um, we're going to pose a number story, and then we are going to use strategies to solve that number story. So, for this one, it says TJ walks three sixths of a mile to get to school. Andrea walks three-eighths of a mile to get to school. Who walks the greater distance? So on here, I used fraction strips um, to show you, but I'm also going to show you I'm um, using cross multiplication. So we're going to do two different strategies. So using fraction strips, three-sixths or three-eighths, who walks the greater distance to school? If this is TJ walking three-sixths, this is Andrea walking three-eighths, who walks the greater distance? We would say TJ, because look, his fraction strips are larger than Andrea's. Now, you may have heard the term cross multiplication from your teacher, um, but it's a strategy you can use to solve fractions when you don't have fraction strips. So I'm going to write 3 6 and 3 8 on my whiteboard. So 3 6 and 3 8 so for cross multiplication, we draw our arrows to show how we are going to multiply to figure out our um, greater than or less than, you know, figuring out our comparison of our fractions. So in this case, we would do 8 times 3, which would go up here. You're following that arrow. 6 times 3, and you're following that arrow, okay? So if we would do 8 times 3, we would do 8 times 3 equals 24. So look where I put my 24, because you follow, sorry, everything's backwards for me. So you follow that arrow. Then I would do 6 times 3, which would be 18. And again, you follow that arrow. So 3 6 equals 24. 3 8 equals 18. So now you pick which one is greater. 3 6 or 3 8. So 24 or 18. So again, we would pick the 24. 24 is greater than 18. So we would then go down and say 3 6, which was TJ, is greater than 3 8. Just like what we found using our fraction strips. So that, like I showed you here, this is called cross multiplication. And again, it's a quick, efficient way. Um, to compare fractions. The important key to cross multiplication is knowing your multiplication facts. All right, this next one, 
says, Martha has four shoe boxes and she puts them all in her closet. The whole is one, one shoe box. What fraction of Martha's shoe boxes are in the closet? So if I have my fraction strips here, one strip is one shoe box and she puts four of them in her closet. So on your whiteboards, I want you to try to think, think about the fraction for this. If there's one, two, three, four holes, how can we represent that as a fraction? Well, let's look here. If this is one over one, which is one whole, then we would do two over one. Now you're like, you might be saying, well, why didn't we do two over two? Well, because our whole is just one, just one. We're not breaking that into pieces. We're sticking with one. So we would have two over one now. So then you might get the pattern three over one and then four over one. So four over one is equivalent to saying four holes. When you start breaking these up into um, like two over twos, three over threes, four over fours, that's because your whole is not just one. You're breaking it up into halves or thirds or fourths or fifths, whatever it is. This one is just saying one part. One shoebox is one whole. So four of those in her closet would be four over one because they're four holes. Okay. All right, let's look at our next one. So we are looking at apples now. Three friends equally share three apples. How many apples does each friend get? And I actually am just looking. I think I had a typo. I'm sorry. Here, hold on. It's actually six apples. I'm sorry. So three friends equally share six apples. How many apples does each friend get? So I put down here the fraction strips for one third. So each of these would represent one part of the six apples. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So if you're splitting six apples among three friends, this is what it could look like. So again, what, you can pause the video, try it on your own, and then you can start it when you're ready for the answer. So what it would look like would be adding one third plus 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 one third equals six thirds. What that one third six times is representing is giving out a third of the apple to each friend from each apple. So that's why it's six times and it's over the third because there's three friends. So you're splitting the apple into three, into thirds, and you're doing that for six apples, right? So that's why we did one third plus one third plus one third six times because the thirds are the pieces of the apple. The six times is because there's six apples. So it says, how many apples does each friend get? Well, they would get six thirds, but we know from our number lines that six thirds is greater than one whole. But how much greater? Well, six thirds could be equal to two over one, which is equal to two whole apples. How do we know it's equal to two over one? Well, how many times does three go into six? It goes into six two times. So if we would do that, then that would give us two whole apples. Again, some of it can be a little bit confusing. More pro Some problems are harder than other problems. But with this one, again, we got the one thirds because there's three friends. We did it six times because there were six apples. So this would be easier if you looked at it on a number line, you could see where it looked like in comparison to the one and to the two holes. So we are going to pause there for now and we will try one more problem together. So this is the last problem we are going to look at for our fraction number stories. So it says, Tony has two oranges to share equally among eight friends. What fraction of the oranges will each friend get? So we're looking at two oranges and eight friends. That's where we're getting our fractions from, right? So if we have two full oranges and we're dividing them among eight friends. So our denominator is going to be eights and we're going to have two full strips because there's two oranges. So if I break this up into eights and I have two of them, how many pieces of the orange will each friend get? Like think of like an orange slice. So if I break open the orange and there's eight slices, I break up the, open the second orange, there's eight more slices. 
how many slices of the orange would each friend get? Well, if I give this to one friend, one friend, one friend, one friend, one friend, another, 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 eight times, then I would do the same thing for this one. So each friend would get how many pieces? What do you think? Each friend would get two eighths of an orange because they would get the first eighth from the one orange and then they would get the second eighth from the second orange. So they would get two slices or two eighths of an orange. So that was the last problem that we did. We had the ones about the apples, the shoe boxes, and then how to walk to school. For all of them, I was able to show you on a fraction strip. And for some of them, we were able to talk about cross multiplying. Um, but here's kind of what the fraction strips look like again. These are just very helpful for you as you do your problems. Um, but sometimes you may need them, other times you may not. So great job, friends, uh, with your fractions.